Recording in progress. Hi, folks. So this video is going over example seven from the section 4.1 notes. And I wanted to do this one as a separate video because I wanted to take my time and really walk you through the, you know, the logic and sort of the problem solving part here. So we want to show that some set, so the set of f where f of zero equals f of one is a subspace of c01. And I tell you here that c01 is by definition the set of all continuous functions uh, f from zero one to r. Okay, so there's there's a bit to unpack here. Okay, so let, let's start with this the original vector space, what's called c01. So c01 is our original vector space. And it's the space of continuous functions. And so it's the continuous functions whose domain is 0, 1 and whose uh, codomain is r. And so uh, let's sort of just think about examples of functions in this vector space. Well, uh, so some examples of things in this vector space might be f of x equals x, right? And maybe I'll just draw a picture, right? So I'm only thinking about from 0 to 1, right? My domain's always 0 to 1. Uh, so I could have this line, I could have f of x equals x squared, that's in here. Uh, f of x equals sine of x, that should be in here. Uh, so between zero and one, I, I, guess, I guess I don't know exactly where, how far it, it goes, right? But it's okay, it's the part of the sine function um, and so on and so on, right? I mean, so there's actually, there's, there's tons of things in here, right? Any continuous function between zero and one. Okay, so that's our vector space. And now what are the, the operations in this vector space? Well, they're what you expect them to be. If you think back to the reading, you read about the polynomial vector spaces um, and the way you add functions is just the typical way of adding multiplication of scalars is the typical scalar, scalar multiplication. So, um, so addition in this vector space is just, yeah, f of x plus g of x. So the normal addition, right? Because if I add two continuous functions, I still get a continuous function. Uh, and then scalar multiplication in this case is, okay, so C is real number, C times F of X, right? I mean, so again, it's sort of the normal scalar multiplication. Okay, so I mean, maybe as just super quick examples, right? If I take f of x to be x, uh, g of x to be x squared, then f plus g, my new vector is just x plus x squared, right? I get a new function, fine, right? It's still in the space c01, uh, so I get something new, fine. And then if I take the same f here and take c to be seven, then cf, right, would be the new function seven times x, okay? Okay, so I mean, this forms a vector space, right? You can check all the axioms of vector spaces, they still hold here. And, um, but that's not really what the problem about is about here. The problem is really about this set, right? Uh, so the set of F, so that F of zero equals F of one. And we wanna show that this is a subspace of this vector space. Okay, so, you know, let me just copy that down here. So we're gonna lose it in a second. So what I'm concerning myself with, let me call it the set H the set of all f such that f of zero equals f of one. And maybe this isn't intuitive, so we should draw some pictures to really start thinking about what this set looks like, what's allowed, what's not allowed. Uh, so here's an example of something that's in the set. So, uh, well, here's f of zero, here's f of one. And so I need those two values to be the same and in between could be whatever. So, you know, like a little parabola, for example, uh, would be allowed, right? So this function might be something like f of x equals uh, x times x minus one, uh, I guess with an extra minus sign, right? If it's a downward facing parabola. Okay, so this this function, right, has two zeros, it has a zero at um, zero and a zero at one. And so this, uh, because it's equal to zero at both places, those endpoints are equal, right? So f of zero is zero and so is f of one. And so this F is indeed in my set H. Uh, what else could I do? I could do stuff like this, right? I could do, okay, here's a really simple function. So I could take um, 
a function which is a straight line between uh, the point 0, 1 and the point 1, 1. In other words, just take f of x to be the constant function 1, right? That should also be allowed in here because f of 0 equals 1, and so does f of 1. They're both equal, so this f is also an h. Uh, things that are not allowed, right, are things like f of x equals x, because now f of 0 is 0, but f of 1 is 1. And so this f would not be an h, OK? So this is what my set h is, right? Anything that's in this, any function that's in this set is a function whose endpoints, if you want to think about endpoints, right, 0 and 1, uh, have the same output. So OK, we need to show that this is a subspace. So to show something is a subspace, let's just do this in a different color to really highlight, right, to show h is a subspace. We need to do three things. So first, we need to show the zero vector is inside of H. Second, we need to show if, and I'll use F and G because we're talking about functions, but you could write U hat, V hat if you wanted to. So if two functions are in H, so if two of my vectors are in H, then their sum is also in H. And finally, if f is something in h and c is any scalar, then c times f should also be in h, OK? This is the definition of subspace that we were given. And yes, it'll make sense to use this definition here. OK, so let's start with bullet point one. How do we show that the 0 vector is in h? Well, what is, in this case, what is the 0 vector? Well, it's the functions, so with the property that when I add it to any other function, it doesn't change the, the thing I'm adding it to. Well, so in this case, that should be the function f of x just equals zero, right? I mean, the zero function, so the zero function. Okay. And so maybe just to give this a special notation, I'll, I'll write f sub zero of x, right? Just to like really say, okay, this is the zero function specifically, um, just giving a special name, right? So it's the special function that is constantly zero, like this, right? Okay. So is this function in h? Well, it is, right? So since f0 of 0 equals 0 and f0 of 1 also equals 0, no matter what I plug in, I'm getting 0 back out. Then I see f0 of 0 equals f0 of 1. So this 0 function is indeed in H. OK, good. Next, let's show closure under addition. So let's let f and g both be functions in H. OK, so what does that mean? Well, this. This is our setup. Now let's translate, right? So we always translate. So this means f of 0 equals f of 1, and g of 0 equals g of 1. What I want to show is f plus g is still an h. Well, if I want to show that the sum of these functions is still satisfying this equality, then I should just add these two equations together. So adding these equations, we get f of 0 plus g of 0 equals f of 1 plus g of 1. Thus, f plus g, right, the, the function f plus g is also in H because it satisfies the equation, right? That F plus G of zero equals F plus G of one. Finally, let's show uh, closure under scalar multiplication. So let's let F be a function in H and let's let C be a scalar. As usual, let's tra translate F in H means f of 0 equals f of 1. 
And now what I'm aiming to show is that C times F also satisfies this equation. So let's multiply. So let's just multiply both sides of the equation. by C. So we get C times F of zero equals C times F of one. So that equation is still true. And right now I'm really talking about this new function. So CF at zero equals CF at one, right? And so thus, this convinces me that the function C times F is also an H. And that's it. Right, I've, I've shown all three axioms of subspace. So thus we conclude H is indeed a subspace. And in this case, I can say it's of the vector space C01 that we were talking about. This is another example that really focuses on the idea of vector spaces consisting of functions, right? So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and I will uh, see you in class.